Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Augustus, and I would like to welcome you to the second route of Tsukihime. This time, we are going to go through CL's route, as last time we, uh, well, we went through Arcoid. And I like going in order. I like doing the near side routes and the far side routes, and I like going through them in the, uh, well, I'm not going to say exactly intended order, because you can kind of, um, you can do things slightly out of order, uh, but, regardless of that, I do like going in this order. So, um, before we get into this, I would like to say, or I need to say rather, I am going to be skipping some scenes. Namely, scenes we've already seen before. Um, and that is, in-game, it gives you an option to uh, skip scenes you've already viewed before, and, well, we're going to be doing that. Because, well... I don't see a need to watch them again. I know it gives a bit more context to some of the choices, and there's going to be, but there's going to be less and less as we go along. It's more at the beginning and some of the earlier stuff, which is pretty self-explanatory for the most part. There is some stuff up to the point where um, CL's branch or CL's route branches off from the uh, the Arcaway route, and you go onto her pathway. Which at that point there are going to be very few, if any leftover um, scenes that we need to skip. But anyway, but anyway, let's get into it, shall we? Yeah, we're going to get quite a few of these. We've already viewed the scene. We're going to take a look. We have viewed the scene. Skippy, skippy. Uh, think about in the hallway. During lunchtime, the hall is packed. Students head to the cafeteria from the or their, to their favorite places, lunch in hand. Caught in the flow of people, I contemplate whether I should go to the cafeteria or to the store. I'm somewhat taken aback at my own leisure. If I have time to waste, I'd better go to the cafeteria where Arahiko is. I begin to walk towards the cafeteria. On the way there, a familiar face waves and runs up to me. Thank goodness. I've been looking for you, Tono-kun. Oh, uh, Ciel-senpai. Hello. I feel embarrassed for some reason and return her unusual greeting. Yes, hello. Well, we've already met once today, so I guess it's not proper to say hello, which is, uh, maybe there's a difference in Japanese, you know, whatever. Um, that's, that's not true. You can say hello as much as you want. I accidentally pushed her whatever. A small smile floats onto Senpai's face as if she found something amusing. Uh, uh, yeah, now that you mention it, I guess you're right. <laughs> I avert my eyes and give a lukewarm reply, becoming increasingly embarrassed. I wonder. I should be used to speaking to Senpai like this, but for some reason, I'm getting embarrassed. Tonokun? Do you have some urgent business? You seem a bit unsettled. Uh, no, nothing like that. I don't, but for some reason, her every move feels unfamiliar. I can't calm down. It's nothing. More importantly, Senpai, you said you were looking for me? Uh, did you need me for something? Well, I wanted to thank you for this morning, so I was looking for you. For this morning. Ah, you mean in the courtyard? Of course. Sorry to ask, but are you going to have lunch? I sigh. Well, people would usually eat lunch at lunchtime. Tripped up a bit there, uh, probably because of my own idiocy and having to pause the recording. Whatever. No need to go into that. Great. Then we can eat together. I'll treat you as thanks for this morning. Let's go to the cafeteria. Uh, Senpai smiles. Grabbing my wrist, she starts to walk. It's strange enough for a third year like Senpai to walk down the second year hall, but this attracts even more attention. The gaze of the students in the hall fall upon Senpai and me, and a murmur of conversation starts. W wait just a second. It's alright, you don't have to... I quickly shake her off my arm. I only did what I did this morning, on a whim. 
There's no need for you to thank me. I draw back from Senpai, well aware of how flushed my face is. There is no need to be so reserved. Work should be rewarded. So please, let me treat you. Senpai grabs a hold of my arm again. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, I just couldn't say that I'm embarrassed to be with her because we stand out so much. Come on, there won't be any seats left if we don't hurry. I'll listen to the details after we get to the cafeteria. Senpai starts walking, pulling my arm with a tug. Any further questions would bring down more stares from the people around us in the hall. I don't know what Senpai is planning, but I peacefully accompany her to the cafeteria. Almost all the seats in the cafeteria are taken. I sp had spent about 10 minutes in the hallway, first spaced out, then talking with Senpai. So empty cafeteria seats cafeteria seats are pretty much non-existent. Apparently I can't read. Well, that's not new. I'll stand in line, Tonokun, so please get some seats. Is there any food you don't like? Curry. If there is, now's the time to let me know. Uh, nope, there isn't. I'm not picky with food. Never am I, actually. There are just certain things I don't like. Very well. I won't take long. Senpai lines up with everyone else. It seems my only choice is to obediently accept that she'll be treating me. But there aren't any seats left. I look around the bustling cafeteria. You can't even find two seats at this hour, let alone two seats together. There. I sigh. There, plain as day, is a table with not only two, not three, but four unoccupied seats. There's only one student sitting at the table and it seems he noticed me while I was looking around for a seat. Yo, Tono. The student's vigorously waving arm, waving his hand in my direction. God, I just, I, that sentence kind of threw me off for a second because I was picturing something else in my head. The student vigorously waving his hand in my, is my dear classmate with dyed orange hair. My head hurts. But there isn't anywhere else to sit. I have no choice but to return his wave and walk towards the table where my friend is sitting. You're late. I told you to hurry because I invited a special guest today. What the hell have you been up to? Arahiko begins complaining as soon as we are face to face. Yeah, come to think of it, you did. So, who is it? Uh, about that, she promised me yesterday she'd come, but she declined this morning. She said she had wanted, she had someone she wanted to go thank or something, so she'd be busy this lunchtime. Arahiko sighs as he eats his chikara udon. Never watched chikara. Someone she wanted to thank. Those words catch my attention. Arihiko, this special guest wouldn't happen to be a third year student, would she? Whoa! Arihiko's body jumps in shock. A rather energetic girl wearing glasses? Whoa! Arihiko begins quivering. The students at the tables around us stand up as if to make a fast escape. Uh, are you psychic? Arihiko points at me forcefully. No, that doesn't mean I'm psychic. It... Sorry to keep you waiting. Good to see you found a seat, Tonokun. There. Senpai arrives with a smile carrying a silver tray. Arihiko's eyes are wide open in surprise. Huh? Inui-kun? What a coincidence! Still smiling, Senpai takes her seat. Uh, uh... Arihiko gives a choked response. Here you go, Tonokun. Please eat until you're full. Almost dropped my phone. 
Even after all this time, I still can't shake off her smile. Oh, still can't shake off her smile. Uh, alright. In that case, thanks for the food. Taking Arahiko's dumbfounded stare and stride, I sit down. Senpai sits in front of me while Arahiko sits beside me. Itadakimasu. Putting my hands together with a clasp, I look down at the tray Senpai brought. And on the menu is curry rice, curry rice, and curry udon. The only kind of curry that I really truly like is uh, Japanese style of curry. I'm actually beginning to get a bit fonder of Indian food, like in general, I guess, but I, I'm not all that fond of Indian food. I, I don't like certain spices that they use in savory or spicy dishes. Cinnamon being one of the main ones, uh, cardamom being another. I don't get it. I do like tikka, uh, chicken tikka masala. That's pretty good. Uh, senpai? Yes. What is it, Tonokun? Uh, about this. What's going on? What do you mean? It's lunch, isn't it? What else does it look like? What else? You say, but all I see is curry. Yes, it's curry. Senpai laughs happily. The problem is, they all look like curry. There's three dishes. Of course. You're a boy, so you eat a lot. I'll have just one, so please take whatever you like. Uh, okay. In that case, I'll take the curry rice and curry udon. The other choice is hell. Yes, lots of cut at Aisu. Make sure to finish it, Tonokun. After all, you aren't picky with food, are you? Ah, uh, God. Oh, God. There isn't a shred of antagonism in Senpai's smile, nor is this some kind of a joke. She truly had good intentions. A lot of CL can be described with that line. She truly had good intentions. Well, certain parts of CL, anyway, can be described with that line. Her uh, personality that she's showing, well, public facing, and sort of not, can be described with that, but not all of it, as we will find out much later. Yes, itadakimasu. Uh, that's probably that. <laughs> that's, uh, in my, uh, Murmurings about CL, I didn't. I just kind of went into her voice, even though that was obviously, obviously shiki. I dig into the curry rice with my spoon in despair, and then Tonokun. From beside me, the cry of a dead man being reborn. How long are you going to ignore your dear best friend? Arahiko's elbow sinks into the side of my stomach with a thud. You're right. We should give him one of our dishes. Inui kun, do you know Tono kun? Do I know him? We've been best friends since middle school. Oh man, this uh, this again. My best friend hits the table with a bang for emphasis. Really? The person who helped me out this morning was Tono kun. Oh yeah? If you had told me his name, I would have brought him here. So why did this guy do? So so, did this guy do something for you? Yes, he helped me fix my splints. Hmm, huh? He helped you fix your sin splints? Arahiko frowns suspiciously. He's also an idiot, but you know. Well, I guess you would consider helping someone fix their shin splints a bit odd. No, fixing splints. Please don't make me angry while I'm eating. Yell senpai gets angry. She seems to be someone you can never tire of watching. Fixing splints? Ah, the splints in the courtyard. You were at it again. You sure enjoy that kind of thing, senpai, but you'd better off if you give it up. If you keep doing things like this, the teachers will start expecting you to do them. That's alright, I do it because I enjoy it. 
you shouldn't tell me about the teachers like that, though, you know? Or you shouldn't talk about the teachers like that, though, you know? <laughs> I, Arihiko's shirt is bothering the hell out of me with this text. They really care about the school. I'm finding it difficult to follow their conversation. Senpai, don't tell me you normally do that sort of thing. Yeah. Didn't you know Tonokun? No, we don't know that much. It's very painfully obvious at this point. Ciel Senpai is handy. Wait, oh yeah, you didn't know Tonokun? Ciel Senpai is so handy, they call her the Shadow President of the Student Council. Ah, uh, I was asking Senpai. Wait, never mind. What on earth is the Shadow President? Is she strong? I ask with my eyes. Yeah, responds Arahiko with an exaggerated nod. She's quite something, totally unlike the student council, which is the student council in name only. She's a third year who will solve anything if, for you if you ask her. Even got a fan club among the first years. Really, we never hear anything about them again later. And if something happens, the teachers all rely on her. There isn't a single teacher who complains about what Senpai does. Arahiko speaks with pride as if actually talking about himself. Wow, Ciel Senpai sure is amazing. Even the teachers rely on you. I look at Senpai, impressed. <laughs> oh, man, I forgot some of the silly faces that she makes. Ah yes, uh, thank you. Senpai turns bright red, embarrassed. Senpai churns her curry rice with her spoon. I guess it's to hide her embarrassment, but it does remind me of the enemy I have to face. Curry rice by itself is fine, but after that awaits curry udon. My doctor warned me not to eat too much, but I don't think there I don't think anything else in this situation that I can do. So I start to dig in for the rice. Man, Munch, munch. Having decided to finish one dish quickly, I direct all my concentration on the rice. Meanwhile, Senpai and Arahiko begin talking about their own homes for some reason. I already know that Arahiko doesn't live with his parents, but it seems Senpai is also living by himself. Isn't Arahiko living with his sister or something like that? Apparently, Senpai's apartment is quite close to school. It's roughly between the main street and the park. Hmm, so Tonokun, where do you live? Uh-huh. I silently eat my food when Senpai, peering at me, asks me a completely unrelated question. Where? Why do you ask, Senpai? You already know where I live, right, Tonokun? I think it's unfair if I don't know where your house is. That's a, that's a flimsy excuse. Unfair? You worry about the strangest things, senpai. It's not strange. If I don't know where you live, I can't visit you if something happens, right? You're a very strange person, Ciel. I stop eating the curvy rice. I have the feeling that something has been said that I should be jubilant about. Eh, visit? You mean you'd come... You'd come and visit me if I caught a cold or something? No, I wouldn't. I don't have any plans to visit at the moment. That's a hmm, lovely, lovely person you are there, CL. Smiling, Senpai replies instantly as if stating the obvious. It seems like the euphoria is premature. Senpai doesn't seem to have any unusual intentions. I see now. That's just the way she is. I guess I have to tell you. Yeah, my house is nearby too. Only a 40 minute, 40 minute walk. The hell is that shit? I guess I can't say too much because my uh, my trek home from high school was about 30-ish minutes. So I guess, I guess I, I can't say too much. There's a residential district on top of the hill, right? Just go a little further and you're there. I was unlucky because I had to... Uh, walk home because I couldn't bus home because the school bus didn't come this side of the uh, 
of the main street that I lived on, and I couldn't take it because they go to the opposite side of the street, but they won't allow you to uh, write it there and then walk across the street because uh, my principal was an asshole and, uh, well, didn't wasn't fit to be a teacher, let's just say. Oh, yeah, you're moving today, right? Arihiko stretches his hand on the desk. Senpai tilts her head slightly. Moving? Tonokun, you're a transfer student? Huh? Senpai asks strange questions. We already said Arihiko has been our best friend since middle school. Arihiko meets my gaze. Uh, listen, I've been here since the first year. We've known each other since then, right? Why are you asking me if I'm a transfer student now? Have we known her since first year? Well, Matono-kun, you moved yesterday, so... Moving doesn't automatically make you a transfer student. I'm just changing my address, not my school. Until now, I've been living with some relatives in the neighboring town. I'm just going back to my real home, that's all. Senpai, who wears a look of surprise, seems to understand. Very... Very strange. Very, very strange. She, uh... Well, we said that we've known her since first year, but... Hmm, I'm not so sure. I see, you've only changed your residence. So, now you live in the outskirts of town. Yeah. It's that colorful place on top of the hill. I'm moving there today. Huh, could that possibly be the Tono Mansion? Senpai asks with some hesitation. The western-style house on top of the hill is probably seen as something special by the residents of this town. I haven't been there for eight years, but even in my memory, the Tono Mansion was ridiculously large. Yeah, that's right. I don't think it's the right place for me either, but it's too late for now that I'm done moving. Hmm, you don't seem too happy about it. It's neither good nor bad. I don't quite understand it either. Well, even if it's your house, it's been eight years, right? I can't understand you're feeling strange. We'll probably feel like someone else's house for a while, too. I wonder if that's so. I haven't gone back yet, so I don't know. Well... I'm a bit relaxed, so I've always got a refu- I've got a, always got a refuse at your place. Yeah, right. My house is no refuge of yours. When you come over during holidays, my sister treats you better than me. Yeah, he does live with his sister. Okay. That's probably only because Arihiko has terrible behavior, but I refrain from telling him that in the interest of preventing a com- the conversation from getting any worse. To be honest, it's not quite pleasant to have my name raised on a, as a topic of conversation, or my home raised as a topic of conversation. Wow, you two certainly get along well, Senpai peers at Arihiko and me. No way, me and Tono would never help each other no matter how much trouble we were in. In other words, we're enemies, Madame Lasselle. Madame Lasselle, uh, Arihiko says in a fed up tone. I should probably know how to say that properly as I took French in high school. But that was, well, that was a blow-off class. I'm getting pretty fed up myself with her pseudo-foreigner-isms too. But your relationship is so good that Tono has stayed over at your house before, right? Doesn't that mean you get along really well? You're wrong, senpai. That doesn't, that damn Tono is too reserved towards his parents and he'd come over to my place every vacation. He's reserved towards them because they're taking care of him. That's why he comes over to my place when we conveniently have an empty room. Since he looks pretty decent, my sister took a liking to him and he shamelessly comes to stay without, comes to stay with us without paying a cent. Arahiko's fist trembles as if to say, unforgivable. Taking care, Tonokun? Ah, 
Arahiko clamps a hand over his mouth. Sorry. I should have thought before I spoke. It's okay. You didn't say anything bad. I continue to eat my food without looking at Arahiko. Really? Yeah, you're right. If you complain about that, you'll be in for some punishment. Arihiko nods to himself in agreement. His overwhelming optimism is something I am truly envious of. I'm sorry, Tonokun. Um, did you not get along with your previous family? No, that's not it. Well, that's not true. That is partially it. He has no problem with the Arimas. Oh, oh, he was talking about the Arimas. No, that's not it at all. Oh, the Arimas were the family who took care of him. They're really nice people from what I could tell. They're a happy family. Even so, he refused to be their adopted kid and he escaped to my house every vacation. Sheesh. Just what were you satisfied with anyway? Or were you not satisfied with anyway? Maybe we liked your sister. There's nothing I wasn't satisfied about. It's just that I've received so much from them already. I don't want to be a further burden on them. I finish my rice as I reply. Now, only the curry udon is left. It's okay, senpai. Sorry for making you listen to something so boring. Eh, not at all. I'm sorry for asking something so strange. You should be. And you should stop asking strange things, but we both know that's not gonna happen. Senpai forces herself to look cheerful. The topic might be fine for a longtime friend like Arahiko, but a complex matter like this would only have been troublesome for Senpai. And to prove my point, Senpai sits there uneasily. Ah, Senpai. Sorry, but I've got something private to talk with Tono about. Would you mind leaving? Arihiko has no problem making an offensive request. Isn't that perhaps an indirect... No, a direct set way of saying, We don't want you, senpai, so get lost. You idiot. What do you think you're saying? We can discuss those things anywhere. And senpai is still finishing her... Lunch. Despite all the talking with Arihiko, senpai has finished her rice... Anyway. Hmm. No, I understand. Well then, I'll be leaving. Senpai lowers her head in a quick bow and leaves. Only Arahiko and I remain at the table. I sigh. Well, it looks like Senpai was having a hard time too, so it was for the best, but you really were pushing it there, Arahiko. Um, well, it's not like I had a choice. Anyway, I guess I'll take the role of the guy who ends up disliking, or she, who she ends up disliking. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Arihiko slurps away at his Chikara Udon. It seems it has gone cold while we were talking to Senpai. Sorry. You were trying to hit on Senpai, weren't you? Of course. She's probably the number one girl at our school. But if she's the type to care about something like that, then she's not worth it. Oh yeah, I really do have something to talk to you about in private. Arahiko's voice turns serious. I split my chopsticks with a snap and begin to eat my udon. What's wrong? Why so serious all of a sudden? I'll let you know right now, I don't have any money. From today onwards, I'm going to be living life as a penniless student. Not that, damn it. What I want to know is this. What's really going on with you, Tono? What do you mean? You've been at the Arima since primary school, right? I don't know how, I don't know why, but it's been eight years already. Your dad has basically disinherited you. Why is he calling you back all of a sudden? I see. In his own strange way, Arihiko is worried about me. He didn't disinherit me. He just kicked me out of the house somehow. Tonokun, if there ever was a family that kicked their kid out of the house somehow, that's not a tragedy, it's a comedy. Oh, it's a party joke, but it's so boring, it's not funny. Arihiko spreads his arms and shrugs. Yeah, 
I guess you're right. If you get kicked out of the house, all you can really do is laugh. And then he said some cliche line like, never step foot in this house again, or something, right? That's what people would call disinheritance. Come to think of it, I've never heard why you were disinherited. Who knows? That's something I'd like to know too. Well, if you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to. Grabbing his bowl with both hands, Arihiko drains what is left of his chikara udon. Lunchtime is short. Following Arihiko, I decide to quickly finish my curry udon. And I think this, ladies and gentlemen, is where we're going to end off this episode. So, next time... Well, I'm not exactly sure because I don't know for sure what scenes we're going to be skipping. Um, so I don't actually know entirely what's going to be happening next time. But, just looking ahead slightly, uh, we're going to be returning to the mansion, which will give us some slightly different scenes, but not too drastically. Not too drastically. And, well, I don't think we'll get that far, but we might. Um, we might get to a new choice that, um, that leads us, or that lets us choose between the near side routes and the far side routes, but that... That is for, and that is to be determined next time on Tsukihime. I hope to see you all there.